On today's episode of Locked On Oilers, who in the draft is available at the goaltending position? We will take a look at five goaltenders, two from Europe, three from North America, who might fit the Edmonton Oilers bill at this year's draft. All that and more on today's episode of Locked On Oilers. Your Locked On Oilers, your daily podcast on the Edmonton Oilers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to Locked On Oilers Podcast. I'm your host and former Oilers game day producer, Brett Holden. On today's episode, as mentioned, I predicted that the Edmonton Oilers were going to pick two goaltenders, count them two goaltenders, at this year's NHL draft. So who could they be? And who are the candidates? Well, we will break down two goaltenders from Europe, Three from North America on who the Edmonton Oilers might pick in this year's draft. Those will be two of today's segments today. Also on today's episode, we are going to go through and start our season report cards for our defensemen. And first up is Darnell Nurse. How did he do this season? And what can he do to be better next season? All that and more. Coming up later on today on today's episode of Locked On Oilers. Thank you so much for making Locked On Oilers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you find your podcast. Alrighty, let's get into the goalie talk as that is something that the Edmonton Oilers clearly need at both the NHL and, well, the developmental uh, levels for the organization. Now, the Edmonton Oilers, as most people know, are going into next season unsure about Mike Smith. And really, other than that, it seems like Stuart Skinner is the only guy that the Edmonton Oilers do have in that goaltending position, I mean, in the, the the organization, they also have Olivier Rodrigue, who I mentioned may be on the way out if his father, Sylvain, did get the job in Toronto because he did interview for the goaltending uh, job there. He didn't get that. So, uh, Olivier Rodrigue, how's it going, buddy? And uh, Ryan Fanti as well, also in the Edmonton Oilers organization, signed as a college-free agent after his team lost to Carter Savoy's uh, team in... Uh, excuse me, by the way. Uh, uh, he lost to uh, Carter Savoy's team in the uh, college playoffs, or in the Frozen Four, I should call it there. Uh, so, the Edmonton Oilers have an obvious need in net in their organization. Organization. So, a lot of people take a look at this goaltending class of the 2022 NHL draft and go, oh, well, this, this isn't great. And to be honest with you, especially at the top end, it's not. But there's a couple names in there. And I kind of am excited about. But let's start with two names in Europe. One of them is kind of a, a favorite for me. The other one, not so much for uh, the Edmonton Oilers. But and, uh, and that's really the one that's sitting on top of this year's draft. And that is, well, he's one of the names that is sitting at the top of the draft for the goaltenders. And that is Tobias Leinenen. Yes, I, I like my Finnish uh, uh, vernacular, whatever that word is. Uh, Therefore, uh, language. Um, But yes, he is one of the top goaltenders in this year's draft. And the name that a lot of people expect to be the first goaltender off the board. It could be the goaltender from Prince George, who we will talk about in a little bit as well. But Topias Leinenen seems to be one of those names that uh, a lot of people like. He's got some size. He's I believe six five six six. Uh, I think he was measured at six foot five at the uh, NHL Combine. And that's exciting. You know, he's a young kid. He's six feet. But the thing that a lot of people are worried about is his weight. Yeah, I know that's something coming from me. But what it sounds like is he, there were only three goaltenders in the entire NHL that weighed more than Topi, uh, uh, Topi uh, Leinenen. I keep wanting to call him uh, Topi Nimala, so excuse me if Topi Nimala comes out at some point, but Topias, uh, Lein, uh, Topias Leinenen, I should say, uh, only three goaltenders in the NHL weighed more than him uh, this year. That's Robin Leonard, 
Frederick Anderson and Anthony Stolarz. Now, the interesting note is, and this is from Scott Wheeler, who's one of the top uh, prospect journalists or prospect reporters, analysts, insiders, whatever you want to call them, uh, 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 in the world. And what he said, and like a lot of NHL teams around the league, are wondering is, well, if he's going to get taller and if he's going to get bigger, he already has questions around his speed and his agility in the net. Is that really going to be something that we want to really risk in a goaltender? He's young, he's already heavy, he's not that fast. If he's going to get any heavier... He's not going to get any faster. And it's kind of similar to the issue that Maverick Lamoureux has that we talked about yesterday. I believe we talked about Maverick Lamoureux. Uh, and where he he's big, but he's sm small when it comes to the weight. He's 199 pounds. He realizes that to be a massive defenseman in the league at 6'7", six 6'8", six uh, you're going to have to also be a heavy defenseman. But, like he said, he doesn't want to just put on weight and be a slow defenseman and just lumber around. It goes for the same for a goaltender. If you can't go post to post fast enough, this is the NHL, the fastest league in the world, the fastest league on two feet, really. And the fastest sport in two feet. And if you can't go post to post and you can't react properly, it's not going to be good for you. And then you take a look at the numbers for uh, Topias Linen. 9, 10, and 0 oh in his uh, JYP under 20 season. So he plays for JYP. Uh, what the, but the interesting is a 9.16 save percentage, so not too bad, and a 2.28 goals against. So, again, that's at the under-20 uh, levels, and that's pretty good and expected for a goaltender like that. However, then he made the jump to play with men and play in the pros. In the Liga, not La Liga, the Liga, or Liga, and he went 0-1-2 in four games. He didn't start one of them. He went 0-1-2 in the Liga with an 8-2-5 save percentage and a 5-0-2 goals against. Not great of a jump when you can say... And again, that also comes with maybe he's not fast enough for, for uh, men. Maybe he's not uh, ready for the shots, the speed of the game of uh, men. And then he got sent down to, well, basically, it, he was, he was, it's called a loan. He was sent down to basically the AHL version of Finnish hockey uh, called the Mestis or Mestis or something like that. Uh, one win, one loss, uh, no overtime losses for him down there. An 861 save percentage and a 315 goals against. That is where a lot of the issues lie with Topaez Leinen. And we're not really sure if he can uh, uh, produce against men in professional leagues. And we're not sure if his weight will really bring him down when he gets older. That may be something to watch for Tobias Leinen in, in the future. Now, the other goaltender, however, is one of my favorites and one of the favorites of Scott Wheeler as well. This is Hugo Havilland. Hugo Havilland, if you watch uh, a little bit of uh, World Juniors as well, where uh, also I believe it is uh, Ivan Halinka, now uh, the Halinka Gretzky as well, you would know a little bit about Havilland as he is uh, one of Sweden's top young goaltenders. He has been on the national team a couple times and he'll probably play for the Swedish uh, uh, under 20s at the World Juniors either this summer in Edmonton or uh, next winter as well. Well, I guess this winter, I guess. Uh, in next year. And when you take a look at his numbers, compared to Tobias Leinen, a little bit more favorable. Uh, three wins, three losses, and no overtime losses for Havlid At the under-18 level, a 921 save percentage and a 2.34 goals against. He got bumped up to the under 18s there, which is where he spent most of his years or most of his games, excuse me, this year. 21 wins, seven losses, no overtime losses, a 920 save percentage, and a 1.82 goals against with five shutouts. Five. 
shutouts. And that again was with the under 18s or under 20s, excuse me. And again, once uh, once again, I mentioned he has played for the Swedish national team. They're a 7 4 0 record with a 907 goal uh, save percentage and a 3 uh, 326 goals against. So a very productive goaltender. And the knock about it, so you look, look at those stats, you look at the pedigree, and you go, okay, so then what's the knock? He's five foot ten. Not the tallest goaltender, but the thing to remember as well is these guys are 18, 19, 17 years old. So they are going to get taller. They are going to get bigger, uh, as we see with uh, Topi Leinen as well. But Hugo Havlid has the pedigree, has the confidence coming in after this season. I would honestly lean towards Hugo Havlid. Over to Pius Linen. But that is just me. We will leave it up to the scouts. And the other thing too is, and the reason why I may hang back as well, is it seems like Topias Linen in maybe sitting around that second or third round spot. The Oilers don't have currently a second or third round pick, but it seems like that may be a reach for them or for uh, Topias, Topias Linen in, in his career. So we shall see uh, when it comes to the European goaltenders. I think the Edmonton Oilers should take a stab at Hugo Havlid. That is the European goaltenders that I think the Edmonton Oilers should be taking a look at. Let's move into the North American goaltenders as two of them, if you are an Edmonton hockey fan, and I don't just mean the Oilers, uh, mostly I mean an Edmonton junior hockey fan, then you may know and recognize most of these names because two of them are in the WHL and one of them, well, played for Team Canada. We will get into that in just a second. But first, I want to tell you about our partners over at BetOnline. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. Find all the latest sports developments, league news, league reviews, and including this year's MLB season. We are in full swing of this year's MLB season. Toronto Blue Jays as a Canadian are just... I'm going down to Minnesota in August to go and see them play. Maybe while I'm sitting in uh, uh, the stands there in... Uh, what What is that? Target Field, I guess? Uh, down in Minnesota. Maybe I'll take a look at Bet Online. Take a look at those uh, uh, lines there. But I'm so excited. Major League Baseball. Baseball is my, my favorite sport, or one of my favorite sports, I should say. Played it for many years, and it genuinely... Whatever. <laughs> I love baseball. So being able to win a couple bucks off of it, that's always a bonus. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and much more. And Bet Online remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this year. Season BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way for you to check on a check up on all of your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. Yes, I said MMA. Sometimes UFC as well. You got to make sure you're keeping up with your UFC because I might spoil it for you, and I'm not going to take the unlike or dislike because of it. I'm not going to stand for it. Uh, head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online where the game starts. Alrighty. Let's move into the three goaltenders I think the Edmonton Oilers should take a look at, or the top three goaltenders from North America that I think the Edmonton Oilers should take a look at. Two of them, uh, well, actually, really, one of them is considered one of, if not the top goaltender in this year's draft for a couple of reasons. Now, I don't necessarily think the Edmonton Oilers should take a stab at him because, once again, he is kind of sitting in the uh, uh, Linen, and I keep wanting to call him Nimala, uh, the Linen in uh, uh, conversation where it seems like where he's probably going to be picked is a little bit of a reach for where he should be. Um, but there are two other names that kind of excite me a little bit more for a couple of different reasons. But the name that everybody seems to talk about as the top goaltender, or most people seem to talk about it as the top goaltender in this year's draft, is Tyler Brennan from the Prince George Cougars of the WHL. Uh, honestly, when you took a look at the start, or take a look, I guess, at the start of the season and some of the projections of this year's draft, 
Ty Brennan was one of those names that you took a look at in the first round. And you went, wow, a goalie in the first round, really? Now, as the season progressed, you go, oh, okay, well, maybe he won't be the first goaltender off the board. Maybe he won't be in the first round. Maybe he won't be in the first round, and maybe he won't even be the first goaltender taken off the board, as we mentioned with Alainanen. But why? Where did the dip come from? Well, Prince George Cougars weren't that great of a hockey team, and they had two NHL draft-eligible goaltenders to fight for a crease or in, in the WHL. Not the best, adi- or, or I guess, uh, formula or equation for many teams. Even though it's great to have two top-end goaltenders, when they're both fighting for their NHL careers, essentially, it's kind of tough. Now, going into the season, Tyler Brennan was the guy, essentially, or seemingly. And this season, he went, however, and this is why it seems like he may have lost his job, 11-25-2. He had a .899 save percentage and a 358 goals against. Not fantastic. But the thing about Ty Brennan is, and the thing about a lot of goaltenders is, sometimes you do play for a bad team, and sometimes some of those numbers get skewed a little bit because, ah, uh, well, you're not a very good team. The thing about Ty Brennan is, and the thing that I like about Ty Brennan, and a lot of scouts will see and like about Ty Brennan as well, is that he's a very technical goaltender. He's not super crazy in the net. He is always square to the puck and square to the shot. His glove and his block are always square to the shot. And no matter what, no matter where he's going, you can see the shoulders even in the chest and the neck and everything from Tyler Brennan, basically from the torso up, is all stable is all still no matter what still waters and that's kind of as boring as it may sound it is exciting for a lot of teams because you love being able to see goaltenders in control one of the most exciting prospects in the last x amount of years genuinely one of my favorite if not my favorite goaltending prospect ever is spencer knight and when you watch spencer knight Oh, during his, his prospect years and, and coming up into the NHL and into the draft, I should really say, is you could tell how calm and confident and in control he was in the crease. And even when he kind of scre- uh, scrambled a little bit, he still was in control. And that's what you see with Ty Brennan. And that's exciting, especially as an Edmonton Oilers fan, if you're sitting there going... Oh my goodness. And uh, genuinely, I said it while watching Mike Smith. If only the Oilers had a goaltender who respected angles and technicality. Well, that's Ty Brennan. Ty Brennan respects and and just plays to the, the, the technical part of the game. And that's exciting for a goaltender. And well, for most professional teams as well. Because that's not easy to teach. Now... There were some negatives in that game, but again, or in that season, but again, you take a look at all the good things in Ty Brennan's game and you see why he can be one of the first goaltenders off this, off the draft list, really, in this year's draft. Because he did lose his job going into the playoffs. However, in the first game of the playoffs, the starting goaltender for the Prince George Cougars got pulled and in comes Tyler Brennan and in that series even though Prince George was swept he did go 0 3 and 0 in that in the three games a .954 save percentage and a 186 goals against so it's there he's able to do it it's just a matter of if he can and especially if you're a team who doesn't really have a lot of depth at the defensive position And that, and if you don't really have a terrific defensive core, Ty Brendan may not be that guy. But if you are a stable defensive team, you like calm, 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 maybe a team like uh, a Nashville Predators or a a Minnesota Wild. I'm not saying they should draft him, but kind of those types of, of, of trajectory of teams, a really defensive thought team. That's exciting for them. Maybe not the Edmonton Oilers, though. The second, and I talked a lot about Ty Brennan there, but a lot of it has to do with the fact that he's one of the most talked about 
goaltenders in this year's draft. And I say that in air quotes because, again, it's not a very strong draft class for this year's draft. However, the other name that I think the Edmonton Oilers from North America that I think that they should take a look at in this year's draft is Brett Brochu. Yeah, do you, does, does that name ring a bell? Yeah, do you guys remember that really, really short, really short World Juniors that we had in Edmonton for a little while? Yeah, the Canadian goaltender who played a game for Team Canada, that Brett Brochu. He's available in this year's draft. He plays for the London Knights, and when you compare his numbers to uh, Ty Brennan's, oh, you kind of like them. And the thing about Brett Brochu is he's been doing it for a couple of years, not only at the uh, OHL level, but he's also played a game in the AHL during the uh, COVID year and when the OHL wasn't playing throughout their season. Brett Brochu, or during COVID, I should say, Brett Brochu went to Wilkes-Barre Scranton and played a game for the Penguins there. So he has professional experience, which isn't something you get from a lot of goaltenders. A lot of players really going into the draft. Yes, a lot of them play, I guess, over in, in, in Europe and play in professional leagues, but it's tough to get a real feel for a professional organization. But Brett Brochu has done that. And again, like I said, he's done it for numerous years in the OHL. Uh, in 2019-2020, Brett Brochu for the London Knights went 32-6-0 with a 9-19 save percentage and a 240 goals against average with two shutouts in that season. Then he followed it up last season with a 29-11-2 record, a 9-11 save percentage, and a 2.75 goals against with another two shutouts to his name this year in London. And if you know a little bit about the London Knights, you know that the London Knights love to run their organization like a professional organization, basically like a breeding ground for the NHL. I mean, you take a look at a lot of the names that played for the London Knights in their careers, the Max Domi's, the Nazem Kadri's, the you can go on and on and on with all the names that have played for the London Knights. Uh, Patrick Kane has played for the London Knights. A lot of very good players have played for the London Knights. Brett Brochu could be another one coming in the, the wings and is a guy that isn't really being talked about. So the Oilers might be able to snag him up later on in the draft and might be a very good turnout down the road for the Oilers. Alrighty, the honorable mention, I guess, for the Edmonton Oilers in this year's draft or the goaltenders in this year's draft is a name that, well, a lot of Edmonton junior hockey fans should be mm, confident with or, or, or familiar with, I guess is the proper way to put it. How about Thomas Millich from the Seattle Thunderbirds? Yes, the goaltender of the team that the Edmonton Oil Kings just beat in the WHL final. Thomas Millich is draft eligible this year and as his coach and a lot of people around the Seattle Thunderbirds and who have seen Thomas Millich play for a long time have said, I don't understand how a team didn't take a flyer on him the first time he was eligible because he's gone through a draft before. And now he's going through it again after putting up a fantastic season in Seattle. 27-16-4 and four this season for Millich in Seattle with a 9-12 uh, save percentage and a 2-4-4 goals against. Three shutouts for him throughout the season. And then in the playoffs, a 14-9-2, uh, uh, um, I almost said schedule for him, record for Millich, a 9-25 save percentage and a 2.29 goals against with another two shutouts in the playoffs to his name. He's maturing, he's getting older, but if, especially for a club like the Edmonton Oilers who really like to take uh, a look at guys from the, the CHL, really. I was going to say the WHL, OHL, QMJHL. Uh, uh, but uh, the guys uh, really like to take a look at guys from the CHL. And 
He is relatively close to Edmonton. Uh, Seattle doesn't play a lot against the Edmonton Oil Kings, but it's pretty easy to pop by into Vancouver or into Victoria or whatever and see uh, a, a Seattle Thunderbirds game. And that is why drafting goaltenders near your team is very important. That's why you take a look at why a lot of people wanted Sebastian Kosha for the Edmonton Oilers. Well, he's basically in their building every day. It would have been pretty easy for them to go down to him and say, Hey, Sebastian, how are you feeling today? You know, what what is it you're really trying to work on in these these next couple of games, you know? And then they can go, oh, you know what, why don't we have some so-and-so just go and take some shots on you or, or work with you or this, that, or the other thing. Teams love to have control of their prospects. And for uh, uh, Thomas Millich and the Edmonton Oilers, that is very doable for the organization and the team. That is where we will call, call or draft talk for today. A lot of goalie talk, I get it. But it's exciting. I always say it's exciting because draft season is my favorite time of the year. <sighs> what a time. Alrighty, uh, just before we move into Darnell Nurse's season report card, as we get into the defensemen of the Edmonton Oilers this year and their season report cards throughout the season, I just want to thank you for making Locked On Oilers your first listen every day. As mentioned, the NHL draft is just around the corner, and our team of local hosts and draft experts are breaking it down with insights and analysis for every first-round pick. Plus, make sure you join me 15 minutes after the Edmonton Oilers make their pick for immediate reaction to all of the Edmonton Oilers' moves on draft night make sure you subscribe to locked on oilers on youtube for the latest breakdowns and live reactions on the nhl draft and much more if you haven't already subscribed to the youtube what are you doing what are you doing you get to see fun setups like this behind me I'm surprised the Brzezgalov jersey didn't fall during recording today because i have to be honest with you before we came on I was back there fighting with the, the wire that keeps it up. So I'm surprised that it stayed up so long. I'm going to knock on wood somewhere. Hopefully that it doesn't fall in this final segment today. But let's get into that final segment for today. As mentioned, yes, we are getting into the season report cards for the defensemen as we have finished out the forwards for this year for the Edmonton Oilers. So let's get into the defensemen, and we're going to start off with the Edmonton Oilers' number one defenseman. That is number 25, Darnell Nurse. Oh, what did he do? Well, let's be honest. It left a little bit more to be desired for. Yeah, in 71 games played, Darnell Nurse had 9 goals, 26 assists, 35 points, with 54 penalty minutes. Now, Darnell Nurse, as a lot of people know, has that edge to him. But the thing about Darnell Nurse is the Edmonton Oilers can't afford to have him in the penalty box for 5 minutes for fighting, for a stupid hit, for this, that, or the other thing. Because he's that valuable to the Oilers. Like I mentioned, he's the Edmonton Oilers' uh, number one defenseman. So he's playing 22, 25, sometimes even 30 minutes a game for the Edmonton Oilers. So they can't afford to have him not on the ice. But only nine goals for a defenseman who bills himself as an offensive defenseman. Not something that really gets you excited at all, especially when you consider that the Edmonton Oilers had 10 players reach 10 goals this year. It, 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 let's be honest, if Darnell Nurse, he played 71 games played, or if he really had any one of those 11 games, maybe he would have pushed it uh, to 10, but still, 9 goals when you're supposed to be one of, not the premier offensive defenseman in the league, but you take a look at the explosiveness from Darnell Nurse, you, you can see just how much he loves to carry the puck, but you're generating 35 points when you do put, uh, play that puck and, 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 and really force that puck up the ice. Is that really, really that effective? Well, if you take a look at my favorite, favorite stats ever, the goals for and goals against per 60 minutes, 
Well, that's exactly what he wasn't doing for the Edmonton Oilers. In all situations, uh, uh, Darnell Nurse had a 3.46 goals for per 60 minutes. That was good for 10th on the team, which eh, eh, not too bad. But again, if you're going to be one of those leaders for the Edmonton Oilers, again, he's a defenseman, so he's not going to be a leader offensively. But you got to help produce on the ice when you're out there. And 10th on the team when you're supposed to be the guy on the back end, not the best. But again, the Edmonton Oilers did have guys like Evan Bouchard, Tyson Berry, who can step up and do that. Uh, And then when you take a look at the goals against, for a number one guy, isn't great. In all situations, uh, goals against per 60 minutes, 3.34, which was good for 21st on the Oilers. Your number one defenseman is 21st on your team in goals against per 60 minutes. He is 21st on your team in preventing goals ending up in the back of your net over a 60 minute span. For a guy who plays 22 plus minutes a game, Not fantastic. Now let's take a look at the 5-on-5 numbers because uh, maybe some of them get skewed. And you kind of start to understand why some numbers start to get skewed and why there's a massive difference between uh, uh, goals against and goals for per 60 minutes at 5-on-5 and goals against and goals for per 60 minutes in all situations. At 5-on-5, Darnell Nurse was at 2.55 goals for per 60 minutes, which was good for 15th on the team. Mm -hmm. which, again, uh, is worse than his uh, goals for per 60 in all situations. And then you take a look at his goals for, or goals against per 60 minutes at 5 on 5. Well, it's 2.61, which was good for 11th on the team for the Edmonton Oilers. A little bit better. That's more what you're looking for from your number one defenseman. But still, middle of the pack-ish, or top half of the middle of the pack for the Edmonton Oilers. Not great when you're playing 22+. plus. Now, this is where you start to understand the discrepancies between all situations and on 5-on-5. Five five. When you take a look at the power play numbers for Darnell Nurse, and if you are an avid Oilers fan and you watch the Oilers a lot, you would know that Darnell Nurse isn't really the number one guy on the power play or the number two guy and really even the number three guy on the Edmonton Oilers. It really goes Evan Bouchard, Tyson Berry, Duncan Keith even plays sometimes as well and then Darnell Nurse defensively. But he had a 9.9 goals for per 60 minutes on the power play, which was good for 7th. Not that great. And considering that it's 13, there's 13 players who played on the power play, at least 20 minutes on the power play this season. It's just too many groans, you know? It's just, it's not good enough. And then you take a look at the goals against per 60 minutes, on the penalty kill, which he's one of the top defensemen for for the Edmonton Oilers on the penalty kill. And he had an 8.58 goals against per 60, which stood for 12th on the team. The Edmonton Oilers throughout the season didn't necessarily have the best penalty kill at times. I know that. That's fair. But again, if you're the guy on the, the, the penalty kill, not great. Not great to be 12th on the team with an 8-5-8 goals against. Uh, let's take a look quickly at the playoffs and 15 games played. Two goals, four assists, six points, and 26 penalty minutes. The reason why I rushed through that is because he had a torn hip flexor in the playoffs. He really, really forced himself to play. I know if you've been watching since the, the playoffs, you know, or listening since the playoffs, you know that, you know what? I was very hard on Darnell Nurse because he is that number one defenseman for the Edmonton Oilers. So he should be the one who's really stepping up for the Oilers, especially in those big games. And he just wasn't doing that. And that is because he was really pushing and forcing himself at 50% with that hip hip flexor injury. Again, we talked about if you do have that hip flexor, that really bums down your power to almost 50%. It's not great. Uh, So I'll give him a little bit of of a pass on that because it's not all about statistics. You got to think about the heart and you got to think about the impact that a player has out on the ice. And Darnell Nurse, even if he's not statistically bringing a lot, and I shouldn't say that because I, I think Darnell Nurse does bring a lot statistically to the Oilers. But if you are having a little bit of a down year, you can still be effective on the ice with your communication, with your leadership, with what you do 
on the ice, between the ears, if you're smart, if you go into hard corners, if you play hard, the other your other teammates are going to see that. You saw that with the Connor McDavid hit on Sean Dursey in the Game 7. As soon as that happened, the Oilers went, oh, okay, we're going to play hard now. And if you see your top players, your leaders go out there and play hard, then the rest is going to follow. And you saw that with Darnell Nurse, with that torn hip flexor. He's playing hurt. And that is a difficult injury to come back from. And he still played three straight series, full series, with that injury. Very difficult to do. Darnell Nurse, this season, I know it was a little bit of a down year for you. I know you're going to pick it back up. But I'm going to have to give you a B, only a B this year. I know you don't really care because it's some dude in front of a camera and a microphone. But, hey. I think you know as well, if, I'm talking as if Darnell Nurse is listening, but and you know that Darnell Nurse didn't have the best of years. It's time, especially if the Edmonton Oilers need to be, or are going to be a contender, excuse me, Darnell Nurse needs to be that number one guy that everybody expects him to be, the organization expects him to be, and who he expects himself to be. But we shall call it there for today's episode of Locked On Oilers. Thank you so much for making Locked On Oilers your first listen every day. Now make sure you tune in to Locked On NHL for your second listen. Locked On experts give you a daily 30-minute podcast on all things NHL all year long. Stay up to date on everything in the hockey world. Locked on NHL, your daily 30-minute NHL podcast. And I'm on it. I was on it this week with Jess for the Western Conference Wednesdays. So make sure you tune into that uh, uh, today for your second listen as well. Alrighty, we shall call it there. We are one day away from the NHL draft. <sighs> How exciting is that? We shall see you tomorrow unless... Unless there's a move beforehand. Unless the Edmonton Oilers make a move today or tomorrow. I shall see you before the draft with all of the moves and instant analysis for the Edmonton Oilers. Alrighty, we shall call it there. I am rambling now. I hope you have a wonderful Wednesday and don't do anything I wouldn't do.